In today's video, we're going to see how we can create something pretty cool by using just the default cube and a sphere. This effect is going to be mostly procedural based. So without any waste of time, let's start the tutorial. In our default scene, we're not going to delete the default cube. Instead, we're going to press tab to go into edit mode or use the drop down from up here and then go to face select mode. You can press the button here or press three to go to face select mode. Now just select this particular face and press E to extrude it and then just give it some distance. So something like that is fine and then press tab to go back to object mode and then gz1 and that way it just comes up a bit. Now we can add in our sphere so we can press shift a mesh uv sphere and clearly we want it to be a lot more subdivided so we can press ctrl 3 to give it a subdivision surface of level 3 and we can go to the modifier properties over here and change the render value also to 3. If you don't want to press control three, you can actually add in the subdivision surface modifier from here as well. Apart from that, we'll also go to object and press shade smooth. Now we can bring the sphere up by pressing G, Z, and then one, but we'll have to scale it down as well. So maybe something like 0 0.8. So we press S 0 0.8 and that's where the sphere is. To see it better, we can just switch on transparency for now. And that's where it is. We want it to rest on the floor. So we can press G, Z and just bring it down. To make sure that it's perfectly on the floor, you can press three to go into the side view and just zoom in and go GZ and bring it down. Of course, right from the start, you could have pressed control to snap it to grid, but we don't want it to be perfectly on the ground. We just want it to be hovering slightly above the ground. So something like this is all right. Now we can take our camera and place it. So select the camera, press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, rotate it on the X axis by maybe not a complete 90, but 80 degrees. We might change that later on, but for now that's all right. Then G Y and just bring it back and G Z to bring it up. Now press zero to go into your camera view and just grab it back and grab it up and just place it till you're happy with the positioning. So I think something like this is all right. And then I actually wanted it such that even the ceiling can be seen or the roof. So we'll press GY and bring it back. And you see it's coming out of the cube. So we can actually GY and bring it back in and go to the camera properties here and just decrease the focal length to something like 25. And now again, grab it back in. So maybe this is all right. And with that, you can also switch off transparency as well. I think I'm also going to just take this and scale it on the X. So I'm taking the cube and scaling it on the X by pressing S X and just scaling it up a little bit and then pressing control a apply scale so now everything seems to be all right and we can finally go into our shading before we do that we'll set all of the defaults so in our render properties we'll switch on ambient occlusion bloom and screen space reflections then in our output properties we'll change the frame rate to 30 frames per second the end frame can be 300 so that it's 10 seconds long. Output folder can be whatever you want it to be. File format is going to be FFmpeg video. Encoding is going to be changed from Matroska to MPEG4. And output quality is going to be perceptually lossless. Then we can change the viewport from solid to rendered just so that we can see what we have. And we also don't require the light. So you can select the light and just press delete to remove it completely. After that, we can bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows and then just click and drag to create a new window and change it from 3D viewport to the shader editor. Finally, we can select our sphere and then press new to add in a new material. Now we want a ring of light to go across this sphere first from the top right to the bottom left and then from the top left to the bottom right. So to do that, we'll first create a ring of light. So we'll press shift A and search for a gradient texture and then press control T with the node wrangler switched on to get the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Then you can switch it from generated to object and then control shift click the gradient texture to see what we have. Of course, this is also a node wrangler feature. If you don't have node wrangler enabled, you can manually connect the textures to the surface. So now we want just a line to be present. So we'll press shift A and search for a color ramp so that we get control and plug that in here and then bring the black in and the white in and also press the plus to add in a new marker and bring this marker to the other side of the white and change it all the way to black. Then just crunch these markers closer together and we get the ring. Of course, how close you want these to be and how sharp you want the fall off to be is up to you. You can leave a fall off like this, or you can in fact change it from linear to constant as well. And it'll be a sharp line instead of having this nice gradient fall off. But again, all of that is up to you. I'm going to leave it like this for now. After that, we want this line to actually rotate by 45 degrees. So we go to the mapping nodes and just rotate it on the Y by 45 degrees. 
And now if you actually change the location on the X, you can see it start from up here and then go down. But we want it to start from somewhere in front so that you can see it. So we'll rotate it on the X as well by 45 degrees. But that way it moved to the back so we'll have to change it to minus 45 degrees on the X. Now, if you actually change the location on the X, you can see how it appears, goes around and disappears behind the sphere. That's exactly what we want. So this is how we're going to be animating this. The next thing, however, is that we don't want this to just be a single color because that's a bit too boring. We want this to also be a gradient of two colors. So we can take the mapping gradient and color ramp nodes and press Control Shift D to duplicate it with the connections intact and then we can just reset the color ramp by using this drop down menu and clicking reset color ramp and then control shift click the color ramp to see how the gradient is. And right now the gradient is going in the same direction of the initial line that we created. We don't want that. So we'll just change the rotation on the X to minus 45 degrees. And along with that, we don't need it to be rotated by 45 on the X. So we'll change the X rotation to zero. And this is the rotation that we have. However, we also want it to be right at the center. So we'll bring the location on the X till it matches up roughly to the center. So this is fair enough. And now we can change the colors to what we want. So we'll change the black to maybe a bluish color and we'll change the white to maybe a pinkish color. And clearly the gradient still isn't perfect. So we'll continue changing it on the X till we bring this more to the center. And of course we can crunch in the blue and crunch in the pink and change it from linear to ease. Once you have it centralized and looking the way you want it to be, you can go ahead and mix the original with this. So to do that, again, just move these to the side and search for a mix node. If you're using an older version of Blender, this is gonna be called mix RGB. Change it from float to color and change the type from mix to color as well. So that way, whatever is white will be given whatever color is in slot B. So we'll place this color into A and this into B. Increase the factor all the way to one. If you don't want it to be completely saturated, you can actually decrease the value to something like 0.96 and put the result into the emission. Then control shift click the principal PSDF or manually connect it to see what we have. And this is what we have, which is absolutely perfect. However, I want the emission strength to be much higher. So I'll increase the strength to something like 10 or 20. After that, we also have to make the metallicness all the way to one so that it also undergoes nice reflections and we can reduce the roughness down to something like 0.2. Now that we have this set up, we can actually go to the world properties and just change the color all the way to black so that we don't get any lights from the outside. Now we can select our cube and it already has the default material so we can play around with it. First up, we can increase metallicness again, very high, so maybe 0.9 and we can reduce the roughness down to 0.3 for now, but we'll play around with the roughness really soon. We also don't want to see anything outside the camera view. So let's select the camera, go down to the camera properties over here, open viewport display and increase passport out all the way to one. That way we can actually tune in to see what we're seeing. So let's select the camera and just grab it on the Y to move it back a little bit so that even more things are seen. And I think something like this is all right. Once we're here, we can select our cube again and then search for a Voronoi texture and a noise texture and plug the color of the noise texture into the vector of the Voronoi texture and then plug the color of the Voronoi texture into a color ramp node. So you can actually take the color, just drag it out and then search for color ramp factor and it automatically gets plugged in and you can plug this into the roughness value. Now the reason why initially when we created the cube, we extruded this out instead of just grabbing it and dragging it is so that the textures over here don't get stretched out on the Y. However, you could just stretch it on the Y and press Ctrl A and apply the scale as well. But that's essentially the reason why we did that. Now we can play around with the scale of the noise texture and the Voronoi texture to get a nice looking composition. We'll also change the Voronoi texture from Euclidean to Minkowski for this particular render. And then I'm going to go ahead and decrease the scale to eight on the noise texture and four on the Voronoi texture, then bring the black in and change it from black to a value of 0 0.2 and then bring the white in and change it again from a value of one to a value of 0 0.7. So that's essentially the reflections that we're going for. Now with the ball selected, I can go ahead and actually create the animations. So let's increase the timeline a little bit, go to frame five maybe, and then for the mapping on the X, just bring it all the way to the top. So press shift so that you get very good control and just reduce it till it completely disappears. 
So I think it disappears for me at a value of minus 0.81. So I'm going to go ahead and press I while hovering over it. And then I'm just going to go to 150 minus 5, so 145, and then change the X location till it, again, just gets everything to stop emitting light. So I think that's going to happen to me at 0 0.9. Still hasn't happened, so I'm going to go one more, 0 0.91, and then press I. So now that you have that done, you can go to frame 155, and we have to duplicate this entire thing to go on the other side, from the top left to the bottom right. So what we'll do is just take all of this and press shift D and bring it down. And then we have to mix these two. So we'll take this, bring it down and search for a mix shader node and just plug that in here. Then connect the output of this principal PSDF into the second slot of the mix shader. Apart from that, we can go ahead and just increase the value all the way to one so that we see what's happening in this particular shader and we can then change the colors for the color ramp. So this one, I'll make it maybe a yellow and a red. So that's gonna be the colors. Now let's rotate it on the mapping node. And right now it's coming from the same direction. So we have to just interchange these, make the Y minus 45. And then you'll see with the X at minus 45 itself, if you change the location on the X, it's coming from the correct top left corner. So we don't have to make any changes to that. However, we do have to change the actual gradient because right now it's all yellow and then becoming all red here. Of course, that is a cool effect by itself if in case you want to do that, but that's not what I want to do. So I'm gonna to go to the mapping node down here and change the rotation here from minus 45 to 45. And that way you'll actually get the yellow and red gradient the way you wanted it to be. So now when you play around with the X location, it's gonna start off from up there and it's going to disappear down here. So let's go ahead and keyframe that. So at 155, we'll make it such that it's just disappeared. So that's happening at 1.23 for me. So I'll press I and then five frames before 300. So at 295, I'll go ahead and just decrease the X till it disappears off on that side, which is happening at minus 4.8 for me. So I can press I and that's about it. Now I've kept the interpolation of these as Bezier itself, because I think that looks a little bit better as it going to slow down towards the end and the beginning. And because this area is bulged out, the actual speed makes it feel like it's going at the normal speed itself. So I'm going to keep it at Bezier and that's about it. But now to get the other shader to appear at the start up till frame 145, the mix shader value over here, I'm going to have to keep the factor at zero and then press I. And then at frame 155, I'm going to increase the factor all the way to one and then press I. So then when you actually play the animation, you'll get both the variations from the top right to the bottom left, as well as from the bottom top left to the bottom right. So that's the two different variations that you're going to get. And the only thing left for you to do is go ahead and press render animation. Hopefully you learned something cool in that video and you can use this technique to just create really nice reflection or reflective objects. I found the idea fairly cool and I hope you did too. If you liked it, be sure to stay tuned because a lot more of these are coming out every single day. And until the next one comes out, you can keep creating and staying creative.